Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's first video is going to be ECM Do 30-day look ahead for the UK and for the rest of Europe as well. Uh, taking us into the uh, early part of uh, May, or into the first half of May. So we're going to look at temperature and precipitation uh, anomalies for the next four weeks for the UK and for the rest of Europe too. We can't show you mean silver pressure or 500 millibar heights with this, unfortunately, but you can get a rough idea of what the model is forecasting in terms of a broad pattern from its temperature and precipitation anomalies. So that's what we're doing for our first video. Later on, we'll have your regular week's 10 day video updates, and that will include all of the usual features, of course. I'll be with you later on this afternoon at the Hungarian Met Office for this one. So, big thank you there for supplying us all with the charts. Right then, so we begin with uh, <coughs> excuse me, we begin with the week one temperature anomaly uh, for UK and for the rest of Europe as well. It takes us from the 13th uh, through to the 19th of April. It's week 16 for the year, but it's week one for our forecast period. So we see that northern parts of Europe are a bit cooler than average, actually, except in the Baltic Sea, where, of course, the sea is quite warm following a mild winter. But overall, much of northern Europe looks uh, a little bit on the cooler than average side, particularly from the UK up towards Scandinavia and then down to northern parts of Germany, over into Poland, and then up to uh, Baltic uh, regions and into the uh, west of Russia. Temperature anomalies are around uh, 1 to 3 degrees below average in uh, that area. So it is quite chilly, actually, across northern Europe. In the south and southwest, it's a lot uh, warmer. So uh, much of France and southern Germany into parts of the low countries, we see temperatures there around 3 to 6 degrees above average. And these mild and average temperatures extend down into much of the Mediterranean as well. So uh, from Spain over to Italy, we're generally around 1 to 3 degrees above average, one or two areas up to 6 degrees above average. And then into the southeastern corner of the uh, Med, over the Adriatic into the Balkans, and then down into the southeastern Med. It's a little bit on the cooler side there, uh, actually, especially for Greece and Turkey. Temperatures are a little bit uh, cooler through those regions. Precipitation-wise, uh, we look like this. So Spain and Portugal are wetter than average, as is the uh, as is the Balearic Islands of Mallorca, Minorca, and Ibiza. Uh, but many other parts of Europe are actually quite dry. Uh, parts of Norway look a little bit wetter than average, and then again to the east of the Baltic Sea, going towards the west of Russia, it's a little bit above average for precipitation there. But those are the exceptions to the rule. Actually, many parts of the Europe, from the UK and Ireland in the northwest down to Greece and Turkey in the southeast, many areas are either a little bit uh, dry and average or quite substantially dry and average. So high pressure is in control of weather for much of Europe uh, this week, but it is a bit on the cold side across northern parts of uh, Europe for week one. Moving on to uh, week uh, two weeks 17 for the year, week two for our forecast period, taking us from the 20th to the 26th of April. It remains quite a chilly scene, actually, uh, across many parts of Europe. The extreme southeastern part of Mediterranean is uh, above average there, as is the central bowl of the Mediterranean, only a little bit above average is the central bowl of the Med. But Spain and Portugal are below average. France is near normal, and then many, most other areas are actually below average. So Ireland and the UK come out around a degree or so below average. Most parts of northern, western and central and eastern, northeastern Europe, below average. The core of the below average temperatures up here around the European Russian border, they're around three to six degrees uh, colder than average. But uh, really, if you draw a line from uh, like uh, like the Alps and uh, the Mediterranean northwards, it's below average to the north of the Alps, and then to the south of uh, to the south of the Alps, the Mediterranean, those places are warmer than average, except around Spain and Portugal, where uh, it is a little bit on the colder than average side. So quite a chilly scene coming up in week two from the 20th to 26th of April. Precipitation-wise, north-south split there as well. So much of northern Europe is drier than average. You can see these dry and average conditions just here, particularly sort of Norway over towards Iceland. 
So hints of northern blocking here, high pressure sitting uh, to the north and the northwest of Europe. Uh, and then it's wetter than average down across southern Europe. So um, much of Mediterranean has above average precipitation from Spain and Portugal over in west down towards Greece in uh, the east. Central bowl of Med looks quite wet, as does Italy too. So uh, it's quite a wet season across many southern parts of Europe in this week from the 20th, 26th of April. It's a lot drier and uh, much more anticyclonic up in the north. Most parts of Europe look quite chilly with their temperatures. Week 3 uh, temperature anomaly from the 27th of April to the 3rd of May. Week 18th of the year looks like this. Uh, below average temperatures across the far north of Europe continue. So from Scandinavia towards the northwest of Russia, uh, we have below average temperatures there, just ranging to all parts of Scotland as well. Otherwise, there's a lot of white going on, which is either average or possibly no signal. So uh, we get to week three and the signals do begin to weaken from the model, uh, of course. But certainly no particular signal for it to be particularly mild, let's put it that way, as we come to the very end of April and the beginning of May. Down in the Mediterranean, uh, again, we've got Spain and Portugal looking a little bit colder than average. Otherwise, the Med is near normal to possibly in the southeastern corner anyway, around Greece and Turkey. Um, maybe uh, warmer than average down there, actually. But again, it does look like quite a coolish sort of week that, uh, away from the far southeast of Europe anyway. Signals for precipitation are weakening as well in week three as they normally do. Uh, so again, we see lots of white, lots of average or no signal going on. Looks as though it's probably still a little bit drier than average across northern parts of Europe where we have these little uh, sort of... Uh, uh, um, salmon coloured areas just a little bit drier than average in all parts of Europe perhaps but down across many southern parts of Europe again hints at being a little bit wetter than average around Portugal for example and Bay of Biscay was a bit wetter than average there through Italy a little bit wetter than average over the Asia towards the Balkans a little bit wetter through there so I think the general idea is probably still quite a bit of high pressure sitting up here uh, and then perhaps a little bit of low pressure and the jet stream a bit further southwards uh, into more southern parts of Europe perhaps. But again, these are very weak signals. So um, can't draw too many conclusions really. And then finally we get through to week four, which is week 19 for the year. Week four for our forecast period, which takes us from the 4th through to the 10th of uh, May. And this does look like a rather warmer week then. So the cold average temperature, temperature anomalies are finally pushed up into the extreme north of uh, Scandinavia. And uh, otherwise, most other areas are having these uh, sort of... Um, orange shadings appearing so going a little bit above average temperature anomalies here as we go from the 4th through to the 10th of May again it's quite a weak signal but it does look as though this week 4 period is seeing a bit of a change I think or maybe quite a significant change to something quite a bit uh, warmer across many parts of Europe still really weak signals for precipitation Lots of white going on again. Maybe these more central northern areas looking a bit more unsettled this time. Possibly hinting being a little bit drier down across southern parts of Europe. Particularly this central part of the Med. But again, these are very, very weak signals as we get to week four. As they typically are. So, uh, quite an interesting uh, outlook this week. It does look as though the next couple of weeks, anyway, weeks one, weeks two, are quite cold, really, quite chilly for many parts of uh, particularly central, northern, western Europe. Uh, down in the south, and relatively dry as well, down in the south it looks a bit warmer, but also uh, rather more unsettled there. As we get through towards May, the signals begin to weaken, but possibly hints it gets a bit warmer and uh, maybe it starts to start a bit more unsettled across northern parts of Europe as we move through the early part of May. But again, the signals for that are really, really weak. Right, that's it for uh, your ECM doing your 30 day look ahead uh, for this week. We'll do it all over again next week. Remember, it's just a snapshot of what the model is showing. It could all look very, very different uh, next week. Any forecast beyond five, seven days is fraught with health warnings. Um, but uh, that's how it's looking this week anyway. Uh, we'll be back later on with your week's 10-day video updates. That will include all of the regular features, of course. Uh, but for this week's ECMDF 30-day look, yeah, that's all for now, and thanks for watching.